Hey, Billy Glisson with Power Core 360. One of our recent power hitting clinics, one of the uh, parents who's also a high school coach, uh, sent us a question and said they're having an issue repeatedly with middle school, junior high players uh, with arm action. And basically the symptoms are they tend to have a very low elbow, they tend to push the ball, and they tend to lunge forward with their body. Today we're gonna to talk about the fixes of that. What I'm gonna to suggest to you is that we're gonna talk about training the arm swing, but really I'm gonna change the terminology. I think one of the issues is young volleyball players hear arm swing so much, they think that you create power hitting the ball just with their arm. And so I think we need to change the terminology. I'm gonna to suggest to you that a better term might be instead of saying swing, let's talk about arm whip. So Matt Anderson from the men's US Olympic team is always a great example to look at. We just think his mechanics are as good as they come. So we're looking at him hit outside left here. And if we're really talking about arm action first, as a right-handed hitter, really what we want to look at is his right hand and right arm. One of the strategies or one of the techniques we're trying to do mechanically is we're trying to include one of the uh, biggest, strongest muscles in the body to help increase arm force, how much force you can create with the arm and arm speed. And it really comes from your pec muscles, your chest muscles. And if we look at his right arm and shoulder here, one of the things you're gonna notice is as you watch his arm action, arm mechanics, arm setup, his right arm and hand stay underneath his chin and his elbow goes back basically in line with the shoulders here. And so the elbow's not coming way up here high early. It's staying down in line with the shoulder line, if you would. And so what's happening there is the first thing that we want him to be able to do is draw that elbow back. Really what he's drawing back first and foremost are his shoulder blades. He's squeezing his shoulder blades together. What we notice in the best hitters in the world in terms of mechanics is they all tend to get up in this position and you see their chest open right in there. You see how open their chest is prior to contact. And really that happens by squeezing the shoulder blades together first. Rather than just drop, driving the elbow back, it's actually the shoulder blades squeezing together first followed with the elbow at the same time, opening up the chest. That puts the chest and shoulder, specifically the shoulder, in a really good position to create more force because in essence, you're taking the big strong pec muscles that attach up here to the clavicle, your shoulder blade across your chest into your sternum and into your arm. And so when the arm goes back and the shoulder blades help move it back, the chest opens, it stretches your pec muscles. Those muscles can create all kinds of big time forces to help you hit the ball harder and faster. More arm speed means more arm pop. But if we just bring the elbow way up over the head, bring the hand up over the face first, all we're really getting is the tricep to load and we're really not getting the pec stretched and loaded and we're missing a lot of power. We're also, when we do this, when we squeeze our shoulder blades together, we're putting our shoulder complex, the shoulder joint if you would, in a much better position for athletes to not only be able to generate more arm speed, hit the ball harder, but to be able to tolerate it short term and long term. <clears throat> if we look back at the video here, then what we're seeing Matt do is you see how his chest opens, he squeezes his shoulder blades together first, his right elbow draws back. If you've been to any of our clinics, you know we talk about the one, two, threes of the arm swing or arm mechanics. One is, is simply that movement. So if we were training it, we want to draw, drive the shoulder blades back, squeeze them together and take that right elbow back. Once again, right hand and arm are going underneath the chin. So that elbow is in line there with the shoulders. It's not a low elbow if it's in that position. That's the best position for the shoulders to be able to generate and tolerate arm torque or shoulder torque in. So it's a healthy position to work in short term and long term. Uh, one, two, threes, that's the one, two for us is then you'll notice what we talk about external shoulder rotation. And so once again, that's just basically taking the forearm, the hand and rotating the shoulder up. That's external rotation. Basically just think about lifting the hand and, and, and shoulder up into that position. You'll notice though in that position, uh, the position of his elbow, his elbow is bent at 90 degrees at that point in time. One of the issues you have with young hitters, especially middle school and uh, um, junior high athletes, is they come in and they tend to get up into this position real quickly. Elbow comes up, elbow above the shoulder level, and the elbow's bent here, and it's stiff and it's rigid, and we're really not getting in a position where shoulder blades are going together. We're stretching the pecs, and we just really can't let the arm do anything there. So they have to start using their ab muscles almost like a crunch exercise to try to bring the arm forward and they end up pushing with their hand 
because they're just not stretching and loading into the pecs, loading into the deltoid, and the rotator cuff. We're really just not making the shoulder work mechanically in the best way to generate and tolerate the forces. So number two for us in the one, two, threes is get up into that external rotation position with the elbow at 90 degrees. Number three for us is, and this is where we start talking about body whip, because once the arm goes, there's external rotation. That's the finish of two. Now, basically, what we know is, what we teach is, you can see what he's doing. We talk about the feet kicking, the feet, the kick of the feet, turning the hips, the turn of the hips from right antenna to left, starting to move the chest through, and then the last thing that comes through is that arm, right? Well, we go from one, drawing underneath the arm, two, and external rotation. Now, basically what happens is, as we start to go into three, and the hips start to turn, and the chest starts to turn from right antenna to left, Basically, the elbow is starting to bend. It's starting to flex. Once again, young athletes tend to do this, but they do it way too early, and they never get the pec engaged. We want the elbow to bend, but we want to go up into external rotation first. Then, as they go up into this position where the hips and chest start to rotate the body, then the elbow is really going to bend. Now, we're looking for the high elbow. That's the high elbow we want right there. We want the elbow high coming into the ball but it's coming into the ball with a lot of force, a lot of whip, because the turn of the hips, the use of the hips, the use of the core, the abdominal muscles, will pull the rib cage and the chest through. That's going to whip your arm and elbow through last with a lot of force. The last part of this sequence in terms of the training piece is the tricep, right? Uh, back of the upper arm. What we want to have happen is, once again, with that elbow being bent, as we come up into that top high elbow position, we want the elbow bent so that it can extend quickly at the elbow by the use of the tricep. Altogether, the whole body's creating this quick, powerful, forceful rotation of the body and a whip of the arm to create arm speed. Much more arm speed, much more arm force than the arm can generate by itself because you're using all the muscles of the entire body and it's so much better tolerated because we're using, once again, we're spreading the forces off instead of just being on the shoulder. We're taking the, the whole body from the legs the hips, the core, the chest, the shoulder, the arms, we're adding the forces of all those muscles and those movements together, finally to actually hit through the ball. So mechanically, that's what it looks like. I'll show you an exercise we do uh, to train that. Okay, so how do you train the arm mechanics? Uh, Power Core 360, we talk about once again being the, the one, two, threes of arm mechanics. But first and foremost, we're talking about a whip. We always go through in our clinics, and in our training, and we teach the athlete how to use their legs, their hips, and their chest first, because they understand that the arm is the fourth piece of the movement, right? It's the fourth thing that happens. It waits on the legs to work, the turn of the hips, turn of the chest, it comes through last. So we're not in a rush to start working on arm mechanics the first day. We want the body to learn what to do to create that whip and make the arm go in the right sequence, the right order. We've got a PowerCore 360 arm cuff on above the elbow. We've got a light gray resistance band. I went through the basic mechanics with the athlete. Now I'm going to activate and turn on the muscles so the athlete can actually go out and hit balls once the band's off and feel how to actually go through a real live skill or drill hitting a ball but after the right muscles are actually on. So we've taught him the mechanics. Now we're going to go into a little activation drill. Um, the band, as you'll notice, is hooked down just above floor level. And the first thing we're going to have them do is I'm basically teaching them the orientation where they're at on the court. They should be, if they're hitting left side, they're facing right antenna over there. Nets here, left antenna's over here. So I have them facing that right antenna. First thing I'm going to do is essentially this. I want them to go ahead and I want them to um, take their elbow, take their shoulder blades, and I want them to open their chest. This is the one piece, right? When this goes back, a lot of people will call this a low elbow. It is not a low elbow if it's in line with the shoulder once again. Now watch with your young athletes, your young hitters, because oftentimes they're standing here straight like this, shoulders are parallel with the ground, when in fact, when we watch any good hitter, basically when they go up in the air, they're gonna hit the ball out in front of them and their upper body is tilted back. So we want those shoulders tilted back and we want this right hand and arm, just like we watched on Matt Anderson, taking with the shoulder blades, and this whole thing is coming down underneath the chin, and we're taking muscles between the shoulder blades to open up the chest, put the chest and shoulder in a good position for it to work, and so that's the one piece. And so the initial thing we're gonna work on is just having the athlete 
feel what it's like for the band to pull them down in that position. And once again, we're reinforcing this tilt of the body. That way the arm is in an ideal position, not a low elbow. Low elbow in our definition means it's down, way down below this chest and shoulder line. Anything slightly below it's good, but if you're down here, yeah, that's a low elbow. What we're trying to avoid is getting the elbow up high too early in the process. So anyway, that's number one. Number two, what we're doing is we're gonna teach them external rotation, right? So that second move after the chest is open is hand and uh, lower arm basically are going up into that externally rotated position. We want them to feel that. So we oftentimes go one, two, one, two. We want them to feel strengthen and condition muscles between the shoulder blades and external rotators, right? To bring the arm up into that position. <clears throat> Notice once again, elbows at 90, 90 degrees of this position. It's not inside here yet. And we're looking for the chest to be open. Work with them, have them feel their shoulder blades squeezing together to open the chest and then draw the elbow back in line with the chest and shoulders. We are not wanting this elbow, if this is the chest and shoulder line, we don't want the elbow way behind there because now you're talking about potential uh, injury to the shoulder. So when the elbow comes back, it's coming back in that shoulder line. And if I need to, to move the arm back any further, it's now the upper part of the spine, the T-spine, thoracic spine, that's turning with the shoulder blades and arms together as a unit. All right, so number three, we went one, two. Last thing we're working on here is we're trying to, we basically starting to turn our hips, turning the hips, turns the chest. Now the athlete is starting to rotate. Now that elbow, right elbow, hitting arm elbow, is now bending, it's flexing. And that's happening as the arm's going up here and the chest is turning away from the arm. That elbow's starting to bend. Now the elbow's coming up high and it's coming up high next to the ear at this point. Now at the end, we're finishing with from the thumb down position. We're going thumb up and rotating down, thumb down. And this arm is going to follow the rotation of the body. All right, so let's talk about reps and sets and speed. Uh, when we're working with an arm cuff on the arms, uh, essentially this is what you gotta understand. We're not gonna do anything at high speed with a band on here because it can put a lot of torque on the shoulder and young athletes, probably any athletes can have uh, some problems with injuries and torquing and stressing and straining their shoulder. So when we have a band on, we don't go at high speed. When we've got the band on, we're doing slow control speeds. We're really working on those specific movements and patterns and we're doing 10 slow reps. And all we're really doing is turning on and activating the muscles. However, with a lot of young athletes, they're weak, they don't have much strength through their shoulder, their shoulder girdle, through their arms. It's a lot of strength for them, e even at a slow light resistance band like the Power for 360 gray band. So we're gonna start and go easy with them. The speed's gonna be slow. We'll do 10 reps, and once again, we're turning on or activating those muscles. What we'd like to do, is once we've done our 10 reps in there, we might rest a minute or two, we might go back and do another set of 10. Then we're gonna take the band off, then we're going out on the court. Because right now, if we've done it correctly and we've really looked at their mechanics and technique, the right muscles are on to actually make the body turn in the right sequence and make the arm work in the one, two, threes. But now we wanna go out on the court and let the athlete feel what, happen, feel what happens now for their arm to really work well dynamically, but with the turn of the body. And so we'll go out and we'll have them hit. We're not trying to hit hard. We're just going out and we're trying to blend basically the strength and activation drills into an actual skill work session. So we're going out and we can hit balls into the net against the wall, it really doesn't matter where. And once again, we're not trying to hit hard. We're just trying to go through the same motion they were just working on and activating and put it into play. We'll do it on the ground. Then we'll rest a few minutes. We're not doing a lot of reps, we're just feeling it. Then we wanna go in the air and we're once again really focused on doing these same motions into the air. All right, let's talk about why we use a cuff versus an exercise handle. Uh, we use the Paracore 360 arm cuffs simply because it allows us to take tension in, out of the hands and arms. So many times for athletes hitting or throwing overhead, when you put a handle, uh, exercise handle, and you attach it to the band, then they put so much tension in the forearms and wrists and hand. And as you know, that takes away arm speed. It's not very athletic, it's not very dynamic. It becomes a weightlifting exercise. And then the tendency really is to push more. They'll tend to get their elbow in this position, take their hand out in front, where in fact, we want the elbow coming up first in terms of the arm action after the turn of the body. 
when we put a cuff on, we can keep the forearm and hands and a lot of the arm muscles relaxed. We can get the tension and the load in the right places. In this case, we want it once again in the pec muscles, the chest muscles, anterior shoulder, and we want the rotator cuff to work as it needs to. And we want to sequence that whole thing together. So we use cuffs, it takes the tension out of the arms, it allows them, and, and you'll see it when you go out on the court. Uh, after the band work is done, you'll see when they go out and hit, their arm action is completely different. They'll start having a lively arm, they'll start feeling what it's like to let the body and arm work more dynamically, more athletically. Hey, if you like this video, please like us down below. If you want further information, go to powercore360.com. Don't forget to subscribe.